नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस प्लास्टिक एनालिसिस ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर्स प्लास्टिक एनालिसिस इज मोस्टली नाउ अ डेज यूज फॉर स्पेशली फॉर स्टील स्ट्रक्चर्स फॉर लिमिट स्टेट डिजाइनिंग सो वी विल सी वॉट इज द बेसिक प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द प्लास्टिक एनालिसिस इनफैक्ट इफ यू रिमेंबर द हुक्स लॉ वेयर stress strain relationship has been shown till the elastic limit the relationship between stress and strain is linear the stress strain relationship till this point is linear and it is in the elastic limit after this point you can see the graph the graph is going horizontal and you can see that at the same which we call yield stress the strain is increasing and goes on increasing actually this is idealized stress strain relationship in actual practice the graph from here it goes upwards and downwards and again it goes upwards because of strain hardening and uh, then at the break point the structure fails uh, but for the ease in calculation Uh, we have idealized the curve and it has taken this shape and this is fairly good for our calculations and it gives fairly good results so we can see that till this point till now in elastic analysis we have studies where the structure is within this limit a strain doesn't ex exceed this point but if we go on loading after this point what will happen the A structure will fail because of mechanism, and the top fiber of, in the case of bending, the top and bottom fibers of the structure will start yielding first, and then it will move inwards till the neutral axis. This is our cross section of the structure. Uh, say beam cross section beam element is here, and this is our neutral axis. This is centroid. so uh, what happens if you load this structure transversely so there will be bending stresses uh, in the top and bottom fiber and as we increase the load or the uh, bending moment on the structure uh, the stress and strain will increase uh, more on the top and bottom fiber so continue increasing the load and a situation will reach when the yield stress uh, will reach at the uh, top fiber or the bottom fiber whatever the situation may be it depends on the uh, distance from the neutral axis uh, say it reaches here at the uh, top fiber first and uh, it has reached the yield limit after that if you still continue on uh, go on loading the structure uh, this will go into the plastic range so a plastic failure will start occurring from the top of the on the top of the structure but the lower portion of of the uh, inner portion of the structure is still in the elastic range but if we go on increasing the load even the bottom uh, fiber uh, also starts yielding and uh, it goes on moving in the plastic range towards the neutral axis and this is just because the stress uh, which is equal to my upon i so y is this distance from the neutral axis to the distance of the layer which, which we are talking so as we increase y the stress increases so naturally the most distance top fiber uh, in this case uh, is at the longest distance from the neutral axis and it reaches the uh, elastic limit first it goes on the uh, plastic range if we go on increasing the load uh, and again a time comes when the lowest fiber also reaches the yield limit and it also go, goes into the plastic range but if we still continue to load the structure uh, a situation will come when the complete cross section will go into the plastic range and it will become a plastic hinge 
and uh, the shape of this uh, stress strain diagram will be like this that uh, uh, the complete cross section above the neutral axis and below the neutral axis will go into the plastic rain and then it is called uh, the structure or the cross section has become fully plastic. So, this is similar to the stress strain diagram, but uh, with little difference that here moment and curvature diagram has been drawn and it is also idealized moment curvature relationship where the uh, if you increase the moment in effect bending moment uh, it uh, the curvature starts uh, goes on increasing in a linear fashion till the yield limit and after yield limit uh, the plastic range comes and again the uh, curvature goes on increasing uh, at the same moment. So, this is the critical moment or critical load we can say. Now, let us take an example see this is a beam a b and say uh, uh, a simply supported beam is there and p load has been given in the middle. So, in the case of a plastic analysis as as we as we have seen in the earlier uh, cases that if we go on increasing the load p first it will deflect like this. So, for load p if it is in the elastic range the deflection will be deflection will be equal to p l q by 48 e i, where i is the moment of inertia of the beam and e is the Young's modulus. So, uh, this will be the value you can uh, very easily find out by moment area method which we have learnt, but if we still go on increasing the load after the its elastic range uh, it moves into the plastic range and uh, then uh, when it becomes the section becomes fully plastic. So, here a plastic hinge will be formed and it will be deformed it will become a mechanism in that case. What is mechanism that if a with a slight uh, load greater than the critical load it will uh, the deformation will go on increasing. So, it becomes a mechanism. So, if a plastic hinge is formed at this place in the middle then it will become a mechanism and in that case the deflection will be like this say if this angle is theta. So, uh, this displacement because the uh, in comparison to the distance the angle theta is quite a small. So, this deflection will become L theta by 2. So, in uh, in place of P L q by 48 E i this deflection here will become this displacement will be here L theta by 2, but uh, before becoming it fully uh, plastic suppose if it starts yielding the curve will be in between these two lines. So, the deflection will be from uh, this point to this point in between somewhere in actual case. Now, let us uh, uh, discuss the analysis steps uh, in the case of plastic analysis uh, this is very simple because it becomes a mechanism it becomes easier to analyze the uh, analyze any structure. The only thing uh, we have to caution that we have to visualize the places of plastic hinges because different mechanism can take place in any structure. Say frame structure is there or a beam structure is there and uh, uh, loads are uh, different loads have been uh, put on the structure. So, the structure can uh, fail in various ways in plastic analysis. It all depends on where we put our hinges and uh, how we uh, know that which is the critical load I mean which will be the actual mechanism at the time of failure that we will discuss now. So, let us see first the steps of analysis draw the structure and visualize different alternative mechanisms by putting plastic hinges at various crucial points on the structure. So, friends first we see the structure we have to visualize that where uh, we will put our uh, plastic hinges for making it a mechanism and for all uh, different cases all alternative mechanism we have to calculate the critical load. 
So, that is your second step calculate the value of critical load for each mechanism by equating virtual internal and external work done during the displacement of the mechanism. So, this is the second step uh, what we will do we will uh, take a mechanism and then we will analyze the uh, we will calculate the virtual internal and external work done we will equate and uh, from that we will calculate the value of critical load. So, for each mechanism we will calculate the value and whichever mechanism gives the lowest value of the critical load will become the uh, critical mechanism. So, that mechani mechanism we will treat for calculating our moments and then the last step that calculate value of moment at joints where the plastic hinge has not been formed using statics. So, friends when you visualize a mechanism and you assume the minimum number of plastic hinges required for a structure to become a mechanism and you calculate the critical load according to that. And for all alternative mechanisms such mechanisms you calculate the critical load whichever gives the minimum or lowest uh, critical load that becomes the critical mechanism and on the basis of that mechanism we calculate the bending we draw the bending moment diagram. So, for that critical mechanism wherever the hinges are formed you know the uh, plastic moment at those places because uh, that becomes the fully plastic and uh, whatever the value of plastic moment that will be attained at those points. But what will happen at other joints or other points for that we will use simple static laws and we will calculate the value of moment at other joints. So, we will take up an example and see how it happens. See in this example here a simply supported beam is there and uh, a load is in the middle. So, what is the simple mechanism here uh, there is only one possible mechanism that the plastic hinge because the uh, uh, maximum moment will be in the middle. So, uh, if we go on increasing the load p the plastic hinge will be formed in the middle. So, here no alternative mechanisms are there only when we in large structures or in complicated structures uh, you will have many alternative mechanisms. But in this case this is a simple case here only one mechanism will be there and that will be this that a plastic hinge will be formed in the middle. So, how we calculate the virtual internal and external work done. So, uh, suppose it uh, goes it rotates theta degree here and theta degree here. So, uh, at this place the rotation will be 2 theta and say m p is the plastic moment of this beam. So, what is the external work done? External work done is suppose this load is critical. So, p c l theta by 2 because this distance will be equal to l theta by 2 l theta by 2. So, p c multiplied by l theta by 2 this is the work done by this load and what is the internal work done since the value of plastic moment is m p it rotates by an angle 2 theta. So, the internal work done internal virtual work done will be equal to m p multiplied by 2 theta. So, from this equation we can calculate that critical load is 4 m p by L. So, this becomes our critical load, load and uh, we know that moment uh, at this place will be equal to m, m p because it has realized the fully plastic hinge at this place. Since A and B are pin joint, so here moment will be 0 and that is why uh, the rota uh, it can t uh, rotate at these places. So, uh, no internal virtual work is done at points A and B. So, this was a fairly uh, simple case we took. Let us take another example of fixed ended uh, beam that how, how for a fixed ended beam the value of critical load will be calculated. Suppose this is a beam and this is fixed end this end is also fixed. So, and there is a load 
in the middle say it is p length is l so friends what happens if we go on increasing the load p, p actually uh, what will be the mechanism here this is also a simple case say if uh, this is the thickness of the beam so uh, how we can form the mechanism in this structure so first the moment will be more at these ends say this is a b okay so at a and b uh, the moment will be more so first the hinge will be formed at these places at a and b and uh, plastic hinge will be formed say mp is the value so mp will be formed and first it will reach the the elastic limit so you know from your uh, elastic analysis formula that what will be you can calculate the value of moment that will be equal to p l by 8 is not it at these places uh, then again in the middle also uh, because after that in the middle uh, it will become fixed if it has become mp uh, plastic moment has, has reached and his have has been formed at these places again if we go on increasing the load the moment in the middle will increase because uh, in that case this will become uh, a simply supported beam uh, because these hinges will make them uh, pin joint at these places and so the moment will increase in the middle and after a certain limit this here a plastic hinge will also be formed and again it will be it will the, the structure will deform in this fashion. So, friends you can see that for this mechanism if we calculate the critical value and say if this angle is theta this angle will also be equal to theta and here this angle will be equal to 2 theta. So, what will be the value of critical load? So, P c multiplied by L theta by 2 by L theta by 2 because L by 2 is length and theta is the angle. So, this distance is uh, uh, comparably very small in comparison to this distance. So, theta is very small. So, this value uh, uh, will be equal to L theta by 2 and it will be equal to the internal virtual internal work done. So, that will be equal to M p multiplied by theta plus 2 theta plus theta. So, friends here uh, you can see in earlier case we had taken only m p multiplied by 2 theta, but in this case what we are doing that uh, because hinge has been formed at point A and at point B also uh, and in the middle uh, say point C. So, uh, at all the three places uh, internal work is being done that will be equal to at end A and B will be equal to m p into theta and m p into theta and in the middle since the rotation is 2 theta. So, it will be equal to m p into 2 theta. So, in this case what will be the uh, value of critical load value of critical load will be equal to this will be become 4 m p theta. So, 8 m p divided by l. So, this is the, the value of the critical load. So, friends you see how we uh, assume the uh, places of plastic hinge and uh, then we go for uh, making it a mechanism and we calculate the external virtual work and internal virtual work done by the structure. We equate that and we calculate the value of critical load. Uh, now, we will see an example where uh, multiple mechanism 
uh, alternative mechanisms are possible. So, friend, see uh, this is a structure where uh, a beam A, B, C, D, uh, a continuous beam is there uh, in which in the panel B, C, uh, in the middle load P is there uh, and again on the panel C, D in the middle load P is there. So, in this case, what may be the alternative mechanism? So, the first mechanism is shown here uh, that it fails in the middle the B, C panel and uh, plastic hinges are formed at B, C and in the middle. So, at three places uh, plastic hinges are formed and this forms a mechanism of failure. So, in this case what will be the critical load? So, si since this is the first case, so P C 1 uh, we have denoted critical load by P C 1. So, P C 1 multiplied by L theta by 2, L theta by 2 because this distance is L by 2 multiplied by theta. So, this becomes L theta by 2 will be equal to the internal virtual work done that will be equal to M P multiplied by theta at this place again M P into theta at this place and M P into 2 theta at this place. So, uh, this becomes the equation and from this uh, the value of P C 1 uh, is calculated is equal to 8 M P by L. Now, here another mechanism is also possible mechanism 2 that in place of the panel B C the panel C D fails and uh, since at D there is a pin joint. So, the structure can rotate from here uh, at point D. So, there need not be any plastic hinge at this place because it, it is already a hinge. So, here only plastic hinge will be required uh, at point C and in the middle. So, at two places the plastic hinges will be formed and uh, the mechanism will be in this fashion it will rotate theta degree here, theta degree here and here the rotation will be equal to 2 theta. So, if we calculate the critical load for this structure, so uh, since this, this is second mechanism, so P C 2 is denoted for uh, this critical load. So, P C 2 multiplied by L theta by 2 which is this distance, this is external uh, work done, external virtual work and what will be the internal virtual work? work it will be equal to M P into theta uh, at point C and in the middle it will be equal to M P into 2 theta. Uh, at point D there will not be any uh, internal virtual work done because here already a uh, pin joint exists and uh, uh, the moment is 0 at this point. So, this equation will give the critical load will be equal to 6 M P by L. Now, we will compare these two values for critical load. See in the first case the critical load was coming 8 M P by L and uh, in the second case the critical load is coming 6 M P by L. So, P C 2 is smaller. So, this we will treat as the critical mechanism. So, for plastic analysis critical mechanism will be this mechanism 2 and the value of the uh, moment will be calculated on this basis. One more thing friends uh, we should remember that after calculating the after finding out the critical load and the critical mechanism we go for calculation of the moments at joints and if at any point the value of comes more than the plastic moment then you must understand that you have committed mistake in choosing the critical mechanism. It means that some more alternative mechanisms also exist and uh, you have taken the uh, wrong alternative mechanism as the critical one. So, in no case uh, while you are calculating the moments on the basis of a critical mechanism at no place the moment should be more than the value of the plastic moment. So, this is the point you must remember and uh, this is a checkpoint also if uh, some structure has more than uh, uh, one mechanism. So, you have to uh, draw all the mechanisms and uh, we will take examples here where the uh, various mechanisms exist and then we will calculate uh, the value of critical load in uh, each mechanism for each mechanism and we will see uh, how we find out the moment 
at the other joints and we will check whether it uh, goes higher than the value of the plastic movement. So, let us take another example. Friends, now we will take a frame structure and uh, we will discuss the uh, various mechanisms. Say this is a frame and A, B, C and D and we take a load here, uh, take it as 2 P and a load at this place equal to P. Okay. Take this length L. and take this length also as L. So, let us see uh, what are the alternative mechanism for this structure. A failure will occur because of uh, being hinges at these three places in the middle and at the ends of the beam. So, if this beam fails, if this beam fails in this fashion, so this structure will fail. So, this is called the beam mechanism. Okay, and say here the uh, plastic moment is constant for all the members, all the elements. Say this column A B, uh, beam B C and column C D, M P is constant. So, let us take uh, the first case beam mechanism. Okay. So, uh, as we calculated in the earlier case, this angle is theta. So, this will also be theta and here the angle will be 2 theta. So, uh, what will be the external work done since the mechanism is uh, we have assumed this one beam mechanism. So, here the P uh, that is the lateral load it is not doing any virtual work only the vertical load 2 P uh, it is going the uh, displacement from this distance. So, uh, displacement for this distance. So, this 2 p will be doing the virtual work. So, its value will be equal to 2 p c multiplied by L theta by 2 and this will be equal to the internal work done that will be equal to m p theta plus 2 theta plus theta what will be the value of P c? P c will be equal to this will become 4 theta 4 m p by L. So, a this is the first mechanism let us call it P c 1. So, the value of critical load comes out to be 4 m p by L in this case. Let us see the uh, other mechanism what type of other mechanism may happen. The second mechanism we can visualize is the sway mechanism. This is our structure and say uh, the failure can occur by making hinges at these points. So, because of this lateral load P, this will simply goes down, this will become unstable structure, it will become mechanism and uh, it will fail. So, in this case, suppose this is angle theta, this will also become angle theta and hinges are more are made at these places and 2 P is here. So, what will be the virtual work equations? Here the virtual work being done by this lateral load and there is no displacement in this direction. So, no virtual external work will be done by this load. So, value of uh, virtual load will be equal to say P c 2 multiplied by L theta. Since this, this distance is L and this angle is theta, so this distance will be equal to L theta. So, this will be equal to internal work done that is m p 
and rotation is being done at this place at this place also the value of angle is theta and here also the value of this rotation is theta. So, uh, theta, 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 theta because at all the four places hinges will be formed and at all the four places the uh, uh, internal virtual work will be done. So, it becomes 4 theta. So, in this case P C 2 will be equal to 4 m p by L. So, you can see that uh, friends that here the P C 1 and P C 2 is equal and uh, it such happened because of the loading pattern and the uh, size of the structure that the value of critical load in both the mechanism is coming same. Uh, there is one more uh, mechanism possible in this case, uh, let us draw that mechanism and that, that we call as combined mechanism. This is combined mechanism, because uh, in this case the sway and beam both the mechanisms are combined and uh, the failure uh, may happen in this way also. So, uh, in this case what happens a hinged is formed at this place and uh, again hinged is place uh, is formed in the middle, uh, hinge is formed here and here. So, it is partly beam and partly sway. So, let us see how this uh, uh, structure will fail, how this mechanism will work. So, say if we have given a theta angle at this place, this is theta and since there is no hinge at this point, so this will be at the 90 degree. Again here uh, a theta angle will be given because uh, this mo moves from uh, this rotates by an angle theta and uh, this middle portion will go down and the shape will be like this. So, let us see how the angles are formed, here no rotation uh, has taken place, here theta rotation has taken place, again here this, this will be equal to theta, uh, this will be equal to theta, so this will be equal to 2 theta and uh, if we draw a perpendicular at this place, so this will also will equal to 2 theta. Why 2 theta? Because this has gone rotation by theta and this has also gone rotation by theta. So, in, in effect if we draw a, a perpendicular at this line, so this has rotated, this joint has rotated by an angle of 2 theta. So, let us see the uh, value of critical load in this case. Here the load here is uh, P C 3 at this place and 2 P C 3 at this place. Here both the loads are uh, uh, undergoing displacement, virtual displacement. So, external virtual work will be done by both the loads and that will be equal to P C 3 multiplied by L theta plus 2 P C 3 multiplied by L theta by 2, why L theta by 2? Because this distance, this distance is only L by 2 and theta uh, angle is here. So, this distance will be equal to L theta by 2 and this will be equal to internal virtual work done and that will be equal to M P multiplied by theta at this place theta plus 2 theta at this place. So, this will be equal to 2 theta, again 2 theta at this place plus 2 theta and theta at this place, so plus theta. So, this will give us, this 2 will be cancelled out. So, it will become 2 P C 3 
L is equal to theta will be cancelled from both the sides here uh, 2 to 4 and to 6, 6 m p and Six MP and effectively, uh, the value of critical load in this case will be become three MP by L. So, friends, uh, you can see that uh, uh, if we compare the value of PC one and PC two was equal to four MP by L. and the value of P C 3 is 3 M P by L. So, this gives the uh, least value and the lowest value of the critical load. So, this will become the critical mechanism. So, friends you can see that this is the combined mechanism which becomes critical in this case and uh, so, we can calculate the bending moment at our other joints. So, now next step we will calculate the because here you can see if uh, A, B, C, D if we take these points. So, here A the hinge has been formed at point B no hinge has been formed in the critical mechanism. So, here the value of moment has to be calculated again in the middle a hinge has been formed. So, the value of moment will be m p at this point moment the value of moment at point a will be m p and uh, uh, value of moment at point, point c uh, will also be m p and here the, uh, the value of uh, moment will also be m p. So, only we have to calculate the value of moment at point b. b. So, uh, let us calculate this value from the law of statics we know that this is a b c d and if uh, we cut at these points. So, uh, let us take the uh, horizontal uh, load thank you very much.